Hello, Paul Ubbin here, and today I'd like to talk to you about the Guide Grid feature. Before we get started, I'd like to invite you to check out my latest book called Renaissance Revit, Creating Classical Architecture with Modern Software. You can learn more about the book and find out how to order at paulaubin.com slash books slash Renaissance Revit. The Guide Grid feature is a very simple tool in Revit that allows you to ensure that multiple viewports line up in the same spot across various sheets. So a very common use of this would be with floor plans, for example, where I want to make sure that the floor plans for the various floors of the building all end up in the same general location on their respective title blocks. So what I have right here is an A101 sheet, which is currently empty, and I have another sheet here, A102, and these are ready to receive my first and second floor plans. If I go to my A101 sheet here, and I scroll up to the top of the list here, grab my level one floor plan, drag it in, maybe I wanna place it up here in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. I'll scroll back down, find my A102 sheet again, open that up, and let's drag level two into that sheet. Now here's really the problem that the guide grid is meant to solve. I can't really get this second floor plan to be in exactly the same spot as the first floor plan. I can get it close by eyeballing, but it won't be precisely in the same spot. So this is where a guide grid would come in handy. So to get to the guide grid, you want to go to the view tab and on the sheet composition panel, you're going to choose the guide grid tool. Now when this pops up, if you have any existing guide grids, you'll see them listed here, or you can create a new one down here. Now in this file, I've already got one called Plan Sheets, but I want to create a new one so that you can see the process. So I'm going to choose Create New here, and I'll just call this Plans instead of Plan Sheets this time. I'll click OK, and when the grid appears, it comes in very dense, as you can see here. So the, the lines in that blue grid are very, very close together. Now if you move your mouse toward the edge of the grid, you can select it. And when you do, like any other object in Revit, its properties will appear over here on the properties palette. So here's the grid spacing right here, and I'm in an imperial file and it's currently set to one inch, which is why those lines are so close together. Now I can change that spacing, you know, maybe try something like six inches. That might help a little bit by loosening up the grid spacing, make it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing here. But it turns out we have these little grips here on the edges of the guide grid. Now, the grid will function exactly the same way regardless of the size. So what's interesting here is that all I have to do is take these grips and reduce the size of this grid down so that I'm basically seeing just a single grid intersection. And let me, uh, let me go with this intersection right here. Right about there. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can actually move this thing. I'm going to just drag this over here to the upper left-hand corner of the sheet, and kind of position it about where I want it to go, and then I'll go ahead and zoom in. So because I've reduced the size of the grid, there's really no ambiguity as to what intersection I want to line up with. Now, the way the guide grid works is you can move your viewports on the sheet and snap directly to any datum element that's in the viewport and then snap those datum elements directly to the grid intersection. So in this case, I have grid lines, but you could do it with levels or you could do it with reference planes. Um, but here I have grid lines, so I'm gonna use those as my datum elements. I'll just click anywhere in the viewport to select it. Now I can see that I've got it selected because it'll say modify viewports here and over here it'll say viewports one. That lets me know that I have one viewport selected. And then I'll go to my move command. I can use my keyboard shortcut or I can click the icon right here. And notice that I'm able to snap right to the intersection of two of my grid lines, in this case, grid A4. And I'm gonna set that as my base point of the move. And then I'm gonna move that over here and it'll highlight the lines in the guide grid and I can snap right to those with a click. So now you can see that my viewport is lined up perfectly on that grid intersection on the guide grid. Now, when I zoom out a little bit, you can see that I ended up a little bit off the screen here, but it's easy enough to fix that by just simply coming out here and making a crossing selection that captures both the viewport and the guide grid. And then I can fine tune the position by moving them both together to ensure that my elevation marker is now within the title block. But notice the guide grid moved along with the viewport. And so now I have my guide grid in an ideal position to be able to enable me 
to line up my floor plans on the other floors. So if I scroll down here in my project browser and locate my other sheet, I'm currently in sheet 102, so I'm going to go back to sheet 101 now. All I have to do is enable the same guide grid in sheet 101, and then I can use it to line up that viewport. So the way you do that is make sure nothing's selected. Over here, the properties will report the properties of the current sheet. I'll scroll down. Next to guide grid, I'll choose my plans guide grid that I just created. When I apply that, you'll see that grid appear in exactly the same spot that it was on the 102 sheet. And now I can just zoom in and repeat the move process. Select my viewport, go to move, snap right to the intersection at A4, and snap it right here to the intersection of the guide grid. If it's not highlighting both lines, if it's not giving you the intersection, you can use your keyboard shortcut for snap override SI or you can right click and use your snap override and choose intersections to force it to snap right to that intersection. You see it moves right into position and now I have that floor plan in the exact same location as the other floor plan and I could repeat this on all the floors of the building. So the really interesting thing here is that the guide grid location can be anywhere that you place it on screen and the size can be any size that you like. So instead of having to endure that full screen guide grid that covers the entire sheet at a really dense spacing, change the spacing to something coarser and resize the grid so that you're only dealing with the one intersection that you want to use for reference and it makes the tool much easier to work with. So I hope you found that useful. Thanks very much for watching.